Justin Peacock alongside James Graham. How was your weekend, James? Absolutely outstanding. Great weekend of football. I mm. thought our normal service had resumed on Thursday and Friday and then all well, Saturday. You've got some beautiful English conditions. You've got some upsets. You've got everything you want from footy, Jimmy. Absolutely. What Talk about the unpredictable nature of our sport. Yeah. It's crazy. It's um, it's great for the fans. It's great for the neutral. Like you mm. want to tune in to every game because, like, good luck predicting who's going to win each and every week. And but yeah, there was uh, some celebrations happening uh, on Saturday <clears throat> in the wet in Bathurst after the game. Yes, they created a very wet dressing room after that. It looked like uh, it was great to see. Yeah, it was. Brent Reid's here as well. Ready? How are you? Hi, right, mate. Good. Good. Mm-hmm. Good weekend of footy. Yeah. Mm. What's, the, what's the games on Sunday? I enjoyed those games on Sunday. The Canterbury Dragons game. It's good to watch. Defensive display from the Roosters. What are those conditions well? in the in Auckland? Oh, <laughs> see that at the end of that atrocious. game, the rain was sideways. Twenty thousand people there, though. It wow. says a bit about mm. how the Warriors are going. Yeah. That they still get that roll up because the day before, I think there was a a Super Rugby game. Sorry to get all PVL and Hamish McLennan, McClellan on your uh, straight away, but there was about five hundred people at the Super Rugby game. But really, War- Warriors are. Yeah. Oh, it was a. It wasn't an Auckland Blues game. It was a Pacifica game against Melbourne Rebels, I think it was. But oh, okay. really poor crowd, but um, outstanding from the Warriors. And uh, the Roosters, too good. But we're going to start with this. And uh, we love a bit of emotion in rugby league. And there was plenty of it after Canberra tipped out the Dolphins. But it wasn't about that. It was about Jack Whiten and being involved in that win after the week he had about making the decision to go to Souths. Here's Ricky Stewart. been a week where I needed the boys, especially the senior players, Elliot and Toots, I mean, uh, the way they captain this week has been really, really beneficial to me. Um, we wanted to reveal a bit of character this week, and I reckon we did. We've been been criticised as a club. I feel sorry for Jack. Jack's our mate. Had a long association with him. He's been put in a difficult position. He had to make a decision, and I'm OK with the decision. There's a lot of excuses going around about why Jack's leaving, and they're all, it, it's all crap. Jack, Jack wants a bit of a change. He's been here a long time. He wants a bit of a change, and I get that. But he shouldn't be put in that situation in regards to the, the way the system is at the moment. It's hard on those players who have to make these decisions in their futures. All the innuendo, the criticism Jack's got, it just, it's rot. We need to make it a better system so we can have, uh, make it easier for teams, the, their, their teammates, the clubs, and for the players making decisions. Um, we all love him. If we weren't hurt by it and gone, we don't, we don't care about him. We don't care about the club. Am I pissed off as he's going? Yeah, I am. But um, that's his decision. He cares a lot, Ricky, doesn't he? He's, he's one of those that's he's not going to be all stoic about it and pretend it didn't happen. He, uh, he As you see when he's on the sideline. Um, what do you make of those comments, Jimmy? I loved it. Mm. I absolutely loved it. Like... That's what you want to see. Mm. And that's, you know, we don't see men get emotional enough. I don't think we try and hide them. And even, you know, like Jack fighting back the tears, Ricky fighting back the tears. Mm. But um, it's okay to be emotional and it's okay to care about people. Mm. You know, they come together in a, a uh, you know, a, a, a game of rugby league, but just shows how much reach the game can have and the connections it can make. And, you know, Jack, He's, he's made a, a choice, um, but, you know, I think they spoke about club legend and um, he, he'll always be a club legend at camera. Mm. What he's done for that club, he dragged them all the way to, to a grand final and nearly got them the victory. He got Clive Churchill in that in that game as well, so he couldn't have done any more for that football club. And mm. obviously he's very tight with the group down there, but sometimes you make those decisions and you know when you're involved in an emotional game as well like that like a golden point victory that's emotional enough you, you you're ecstatic and then mm. yeah credit to jack as well for for taking that interview mm. because a lot of players would have said no and just no nah. and then even after that some take yeah. off for radio as well so credit to jack for you know facing the music and not trying to shy away one thing both those interviews did for me ready was mm. was finally open up the doors at Canberra, because you didn't hear a lot last week about the decision, how it came to it, how it was reacted to within the four walls down there. We made the assumption, which was wrong, totally wrong. I, we were chatting about it on Footy Talk last week about, oh, it's going to be icy, it's going to be blah, blah, blah. Obviously wasn't, but it was good to 
kind of that laid bare what exactly is going on at that that footy club. Well, they can't afford it to be icy because they're probably the two most important players in that footy team. And if mm. it's icy, it's not going to work, and that's going to completely ruin their season. I, I, you know, I think it shows how much Ricky cares. I, I also think it shows how much he's probably hurt by the decision. Yeah, and how much uh, it personally affects him that Jack's going because you can't escape the f- fact that. Um, in some way, it's a little slap in the face for Ricky, I reckon. Mm. And he probably recognises that. So, you know, I think it's a, a lot of that's Ricky's care for Jack, but some of it's the hurt that he feels that basically Jack's rejected him because that's what's happened. He's rejected him and the footy club, and, and that's got to hurt a bloke like Ricky who's, you know, really proud broke, bloke, really proud of that football team and that city um, means so much to that city. And whenever guys important as Jack sort of turn your back on, on that footy team in that and that town, because you are in a way when you're in a when it's a one team town. If you if you move, you're, you're more or less rejecting the town itself, right? Yeah. So I'm sure in a way uh, some of that emotions, Ricky, sort of venting at at the disappointment of it all. Yeah, and and he says, "Am I disappointed? Am I pissed off? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And it's okay to 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 admit those uh, emotions when you're feeling them. I just think. I don't know about you really, but does this close the door on some of the speculation that was circulating last week around a, a potential mid-season move for Jack White into South Sydney? I, for, for me, that that closed the door. Yeah, I, I don't think that. You know, I think that was a um, a hail mary by yeah. South. I don't think that was ever really realistic. I think South would have loved it, the opportunity for that to happen, but you know that would have, would have been Canberra throwing away their season, and they're still in the mix. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they can't afford to do that. And I, and I don't think that was ever a realistic um, consideration for Canberra. It's happened a few times to Ricky since he's been in Canberra, the, the, the rejection notion. You've got the Milford situation. He didn't want him to go, did he? He, he, no. he didn't think he was ready to take that deal. Yeah. Uh, and the James, James Tedesco, remember that one? Yeah, that was Sliding one of the great ones, moment. wasn't it? Yeah. Like he was yeah, literally, wow. he was signed, wasn't he? And then yeah. he I don't uh, know if that was under Ricky, though. Was that? Before Ricky's time, it might yeah. have been really, well. It's Canberra. It's, yeah, it's happened yeah, yeah. to Canberra and Don Fern has been there for a while. Georgie Williams has walked out in them. Yeah, yep. um, Bateman left Johnny the Bateman. year early. Johnny they thought Bateman there would be a chance left, of getting so. Fafita, didn't they? As well, a long time ago. Yeah, well, no, oh, this, sorry, that was this year. This Dave, year. Dave Fafita. Yeah, they they threw a lot of money at Dave Fafita, and he obviously decided to stay on the Gold Coast. And they'd be ruining that the way Dave Fafita's gone in the last few weeks. He's been unbelievable. Yeah, so, he has. Um, yeah, they've had some rejection, but look, they've had some wins as well over the years. I mean, mm. Ricky, you know, you, you, that's what happens in footy. Unless you're at the Roost or South, you suffer a lot of wins and losses. Speaking of wins, gentlemen, the West Tigers. Oh, yeah. So you, you sat there at the start of the season after they, especially after their first two weeks, and you're going, okay. And I remember, I think we were sitting in here one Monday, and you go down the list, where are they going to get the first one? Where, oh, geez, then they, they they play Para, they play Manly, they play Penrith. Oh, it's not going to happen there. <laughs> Ends up being Penrith Yeah, mm. on a wet night in Bathurst. It's, yeah, fantastic result. I mean, okay, Penrith bombed two tries over the line. Nathan Clear who want that moment back when he was trying to slide over. But still, the resilience shown by the Tigers and how they came up with the win, fantastic. I don't know about you, but I just kept waiting for the Panthers to score yeah, and the heartbreak to happen. And you'll be talking again about the, oh, just how close they are to a win. When's it going to come? They yeah, play yeah. the Dragons in Magic Round this weekend. Oh, this could be it. If they perform like they did the past two weeks, yeah. they might get it. But um, they were fantastic. I've got to give a big shout out to the young fullback, Bula. Um, good, there was a couple of high balls that went his way. Those moments, everybody watching, I imagine most Tigers fans turned away mm-hmm. and just waited to hear what the commentator said because they were too scared to... To watch, um, Luke Brooks' kicking game was outstanding. You know, the, their efforts through the middle of the field um, in treacherous conditions. Same for both teams. It probably is a leveler, but still mm. those those victories are hard graft <laughs> and you've got to grind them out. See the celebration photo on the bus from Alex Twell with uh, David Norfoluma. Put up a post, congratulations, 100 tries between us. <laughs> in the they deserve that, though, because they've been knocking on the door for a few yeah. weeks now, the Tigers. They've yeah. been having a red hot go. They cop a lot of flack and... Yeah, we all have our turn at, you know, poking a bit of fun at the Tigers. Yeah. But, you know, that, they've had a red hot go this year under Tim and Benji and, and those guys. And they just, they've just lacked a a, a, play, a a leader on the field, a half who could lead them around. The, you know, if they had Daly Cherry Evans last week, they beat Manly. Mm. Um, and that's what they've lacked. And Luke Brooks really stood up, I thought, on um, Saturday night for a bloke who's copped so much flack and he's under so much pressure. He doesn't have a deal for next season. There's been all this talk about uh, whether he's going to get one from the Tigers or not. He couldn't have done much more the other night. What is to, the word on that, by the way? 
Well, I don't think they've made a call yet. And obviously with the change now in the, in the recruitment at mm. the Tigers, the big change that's coming with Scott Fulton going there, it'll be Scott Fulton's decision along with Benji and Tim. Um, and, you know, they're scouring the market for a – they, they want a, an organiser. That's what they're desperate for. Mm. There's just none out there. And Luke's not that guy, right? I think we've established now Luke, Luke Brooks is not the, the organising half. He's more the running sort of 5'8". Um, and they're desperate to, to go to market and trying to f- try and find a, a, an organising halfback. Now, I'm not sure where Scott lies on that because Scott's going to have a big say in this now. Scott Fulton now that he's yeah, coming yeah. to the club, so um, they, he'll right. obviously have to get his feet under the desk and talk to Tim and Benji about what direction they want to go in before they make a decision on Luke Brooks. I find that incredible, James, that you're scouring the market for an organiser when the organisers in the game are the highest paid, and the development pathways around this position. It's, it's had even Andrew John scratching his head in the last few years about what is happening to these players in their development stages. And for for none to be out there, it's just incredible. Well, I think it, it's obviously, it's in, it can be incredible. It's also incredibly difficult task to do, yeah. to have those skills and those traits. So, you know, there's a reason that they're rare and there's a reason why the ones that are really good stand out so much. Uh, why your Thurston's and your Johns and your Cronks? You look at what Adam Reynolds has done in Brisbane. Yeah, completely changed that team. Mm. Um, they, they're, 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 they're rare and talents rare, uh, and they're hard to come by. So the Tigers, you know, I, it's a, I, I, I think they will go in a different direction to Luke Brooks. Mm. He's been there for a long time, and it's perhaps time for something new, a different idea. You, they got their organizer though, and they let him go out the door. Mm. to Newcastle. Mm. Yeah. And then when, the one before that, they let him go to Parramatta. Yeah. Well, I think, I don't know if they let him go to Parramatta. But he went. Yeah. He went. And then yeah. they obviously tried really hard to get him back. But it's interesting at the Tigers because they're not the only one with uh, a fair bit of money to spend on on, on potential recruitments. Mm. I, personally, I think they might look to England and, and look for uh, Lewis Dodd. Like there was talk of him coming over. He has got Australian representation now. Um. They do need an organiser, but what, what I've really liked the past couple of weeks about the Tigers is they seem to be figuring out a way to play with Appy. So we're seeing him get much more involvement, much more creativity out of that dummy half, and that's only going to get better as the seasons go on. So we're seeing him sort of jump across the field a little bit, put players in behind the ad line, also then jump across and bring players underneath. It's, they're starting to just figure out uh, where I need to be to take advantage of our currently our best player. You get and, the feeling and then, the conditions help that that as well. Yeah, right? yeah, and the and the deception that Appy brings that like we we all know what he did with Penrith the past couple of seasons. Mm. The players have got to be on board with that. So, um, you know, the couple of couple of weeks ago they played the Dogs and Appy's jumped out and no one's there and he does a three hundred and sixty yeah. and this is on try line. Yeah. Um, but I think now we're starting to see the um, the, the the penny drop for some of those Tigers players. Two in a row for Penrith. Don't say that too often. I don't know no. the stats in the last couple of years, but, you know, oh, it was a tight one against South. That's a, that's a high-quality yeah. potential yeah. grand final matchup. But then you drop that one, and then you've got Origin coming. Yeah. Mm. yeah. If they, I think it, if, if they have um, Liam Martin, James Fisher-Harris. Fisher yeah. Yep. Um, they have come back to the – well, we spoke Spencer about Lino this missed before. As well, Spencer Lane, yeah. like, yeah. think, think of, of Penrith tactics, and we look at their superstars, but they attack through their defence. That's why they get the best field position. Hmm. That's and, and still, I think they still might be the best defensive team in the competition, but in terms of tries conceded, but their line speed is through the roof and it's led by Fisher Harris. It's led by Martin. And unfortunately, the players that come in, they can't replicate that. It's almost impossible to replicate because of the ferocity that they defend with. Hmm. So they are missing those. I think Penrith have come back to the pack this year and the pack has gotten bigger. So, yeah. you know, Penrith are looking for that three in a row. I mean, probability-wise, last year, th- as long as they don't get injured and they play somewhere near their best, I always thought they were going to win it. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of other teams that you could trouble them, but I think this season now, there's that P- Penrith could play at their best, but so could a couple of other teams, and it's a coin toss. I still do think, though, if they come up with a performance and whether or not they've got the cattle to be able to conjure up a performance like this, the first half in the grand final last year, if they come up with a performance like that against any opposition, they win. Yeah. But I, but I also think that they can't afford to have injuries. I think yeah. that's 
you know, losing Kikau no and Arpy at the yeah. end of last year, that yeah. eats in your depth. Then you're missing Fisher, Harris, Martin, and they just don't have the amount of quality. They've still got a lot of depth. They just don't have yeah. the quality of depth that maybe they had 12 months ago. So yeah. that that's what I think's brought them back to the field a yeah. bit. And, and like, Isaac Tango as well, like yeah. he's, he's yep. been missing. Taylor May's yeah. been out as well. So, you know, when when previously if they lost players, they'd just bring someone else in. Everyone mm. would go, okay, well, they're still as good mm. as they were. But now if they lose a couple of players, it really eats into that de- It tests that depth. Um, and that's going to be the issue for them because the past couple of years they've been really lucky with injuries as well. They have not had a lot of injuries. Yeah. They're two mm. premiership seasons. This year they've had a few, and this year they've got less depth. So mm. this year it hurts them more. Yeah. So that's going to be the challenge. You know, I think um, it shows if they if they lose blokes around final. Look, they'll be there at the end of the season. We all know mm. that, right? But if they lose some blokes around finals time, well, suddenly they're probably not the fate of complete they were 12 months ago. Dragons. Now, if I'm a Dragons board member, and thank Christ, Christ I'm not, I look at the weekend and go, right, that's who we should be and should aspire to be in the Roosters, and this is who we are at the moment, and delve into the reasons why. Now, everyone assumes the reasons why is Anthony Griffin is the coach, and whether or not he remains the coach remains to be seen. But Anzac Day, fantastic contest last Tuesday. Roosters edged the Dragons, who were awesome on the day, and probably just maybe on another day get, get away with a win. Roosters go over to New Zealand in horrible conditions in front of 20,000 people at Mount Smart and come up with one of the best defensive displays in wet weather football of the season, full stop, 14-0. Just nullify everything that the Warriors tried to do. Dragons at home, expectant crowd at Wynn Stadium and get done by the Bulldogs, who are off three in a row. Yeah. Losses in a row. They're just treading water, the Dragons. That's what it feels like. They're just treading water. And and I don't, you know, I think... uh, we we all know this indecision over the coach's future is sort of hovering over their head. I just think they need to make a call. Yeah. Just make it. It's obvious now he will not be there. I mean, they are, what have they won, two games this year? Yeah. Two games this year. Yeah. Um, you know, they're a chance of, you know, if they have a bad magic round, I think they can go equal last because they think they play the Tigers, don't they? They do. They just showed nothing yesterday. They were awful. Look, when you've got a, a medal, and with all due respect to, to these medals, but at one point there, there was... Josh Reynolds, um, Ockenbaugh playing middles for for the Dragons, for the Dogs. The dogs. Uh, for, sorry, for for, for the Dogs yeah. um, alongside Reed Marnie. So there's like, you know, there's plenty of targets there. Three to, little to, ones to, to, to go mm. out. Well, Ockenbaugh's a big guy, but he's a winger. Uh, sorry, yeah, that's what I mean. So, yeah. you know, how you don't take advantage of that? Mm. I, I I just Jimmy, they're attacking the first half. It was diabolical. Mm. Mm. They were, I think Joey called them legless on the coverage. Yeah. I think it was an apt description of the way they played. Yeah. Uh, see, it's, it's, see I mean, so I wonder, like, take the coach's contract situation out of it. Like, say, even if he had a couple of years left, are they looking at that now and going, we we might need to let him go? Well, I would have, you, yes, I would have thought they would yeah, be. Yeah. Because they, they're just. You, but we, then I'm thinking, is this perhaps a financial decision? So we leave him in there now. So we don't have to pay him out, but then we don't have to bring somebody in. You know, is anybody going to come come in now and change their fortunes around for this season where they could make the eight? No, Are they too far too far behind the eight ball. We spoke about the pack being so big. Can they catch the pack? Big question. It goes to an assistant, doesn't it? Who treads yeah. water until the the new guy? And if you, but if you actually look at the the, the squad on on paper, <laughs> it's a top eight it, squad. You know, they've got plenty they of talent. Like, of if you look at, compared to, like, let, let's take the, the Dolphins, for example. Wayne's, Wayne's assembled there a lot, a lot of experience mm. with a bit of sprinkle of youth. Well, if you go like for like compared to the Dragons, mm. they've got a lot of experience, a sprinkle of very talented youth, but also got a superstar in Benny Hunt. Like, then, you know, the, the contrast there. Yeah. Do you know the, the the thing I don't get? Like I, I watch the drag, dragons play most weeks, and the guy who frustrates me more than anyone else is Zach Lomax. He he was such a promising player a few years ago. He got an absolute bath from Jake Avrilo yeah. the weekend. An absolute bath. Mm. And Jake Avrilo is not really a centre. I mean, that's not where he's from memory. He's made his name more as a in the halves. I think originally he was a six and played a bit of fullback. Yeah. But ugh, honestly. He's just not got. He's just not improved as a footballer. What did you notice when you were there about what was in the timber? You know the vibe about the joint. Look, I, uh, well, f- first year we 
it was there was a buzz. Mm. There was a buzz about it, and, and we were going strong. And then, for some obvious reasons, it mm. fell off a bit of a cliff, didn't it? So, um, and then you know I left, and then came back in a in a you know off field role. It's just it's difficult to to put your finger on, I guess. Um, the 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 board side of things doesn't seem to be ideal. I mean, that's well documented. Mm. Um, and then within within the playing group, I I just don't know. I just don't know what what they're standing for at the moment. Like well, the majority, like we, say, we like like we say, they've got a, a a quality team on paper. Whether or not it's top eight material or can push for a push push for a, a premiership this season. I don't know, but the, mm. there seems to be enough there that they should be in and around the eight and mm. challenging for the eight, like they did last year. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes the the outside noise can, can affect that group, um, and, and I think that's what's happened. And you know, they beat the Dolphins quite comfortably, and since then they've had four really close losses, mm. like really close by under four points in each occasion. The last two, uh, well, they lost by two points yesterday mm-hmm. and one point against the Roosters, so. They're not that far. You know? Most of them have had the, the last play of the game to have a crack at yeah. pulling something out of yeah. their so, collective you know, backsides. When we when we talk about Coach Anthony Griffin, is he just gonna play like is he playing that card? If they get if they got annihilated by one by the dogs or, or, or one of those teams that they've played recently, then mm. yeah, the right thing would be on the wall. But you know, perhaps that's the card that he's got. But I, I honestly think this could be a, a financial decision and something well, we don't want to pay him out. Mm. Um, and then look to bring someone in, and and would someone come in? And then is that we're putting a line? Is the message to the fans? Then well, that's the line through the season. That's the thing about you mentioned it there about their squad, about what they've got. Surely that, f- from a purely football coaching perspective, is an attractive proposition yeah. to become involved with. So I can only think that you, you know the names that have been bandied about, like Jason Riles, it just makes immediate sense. He's played at the club, he walks in, he can do a preseason, get the most out of this group. He's had a great apprenticeship, but that doesn't seem that there seems to be something holding a storyline like that back. And is it that the board is that how the club is run? And does a first time coach want to walk into that and have to deal with all that crap aside from just trying to get the most out of a player like Zach Lomax? Potentially like, you know, the names that we're, we're talking about in terms of who may take over um, or those younger inexperienced coaches, um, mm. or this would be their first job. Like, they would be smart enough to know that this could be the poison chalice. It's like, oh yeah, I want to be an NRL first grade coach, mm. but where? Look at Fitzgibbon. He he waited. Yeah, he Geraldo waited. waited. Geraldo yep. waited. You know, the, and we're putting these guys in that category: Dean Young, mm. you know, Benny Hornby, Jason Riles. That we they've got the potential to be really good coaches, but then they might. So they look at. Um, those recent examples, and then you look at a guy like Dean Pay. Mm. He got his chance, and then now, like that, that's it. It's over. Some you get your one shot, and then it's gone. Yep. So do they just bide their time that little bit longer? You know, it, th- these are the thoughts and the conversations that those blokes will be having. Mm. The promising thing about the Dragons, from that perspective, though, Jim, is they they feel like they're not far off, right? So if you believe in yourself as a coach and believe in your ability to make an impact. It, it would seem you don't need to make that significant impact to make the Dragons um, credible again. Yeah. They, they, because as you said, they've lost a couple of close games in recent weeks. They win those two games. They're on the verge. I think they're knocking on the door of the top eight. So it feels like they're not a mile away from being a decent footy team. So if you're a, you know, you're a co- coach and believes in your own ability, and I'm sure those guys all do, they're probably looking at that job thinking, well, we're, prob- yeah. we're really not that far away. And they're going to have Ben Hunt still. They're going to have, as I said, a guy, guy like Zach Lomax, who if you can get the best out of him, really good footballer. Jack Bird, you know, the, Sloan's been good the last couple of weeks. He wasn't that good yesterday, but he's been good the last few weeks. So there's a lot of talent there. So Do you think I, someone would take it mid-season? No, no one will take it mid-season. They'll, they'll have to put an interim guy in. I would have thought the yeah. talk is that, well, they'll offer Hook the chance to finish the season. If he doesn't want to do that, then a guy like Ryan Carr, who's one of the assistants, might come in and do the job. But you're not going to get any of those guys mid-season. Doesn't matter who you go with, you're not going to get any of them. Uh, Justin Holbrook, I dare say, as he sat down 
back in his coach's box to resume the game at uh, Four Pines Park on Saturday night was thinking, please do something for me, guys, because the Not last again. two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> the last two weeks we've had a good lead. We're all buoyant coming into halftime. Things are going well, and good on them, Gold Coast Titans. Yeah. That, that's an impressive performance against an underwhelming Manly. We'll get to Manly in a min- minute, but mm. um, I don't know. Is it along the lines of job saving for Justin Holbrook that second half for the Titans? Is that putting it in too bolder letters, Reedy? No, I reckon he was under a bit of pressure after the last few weeks, um, you know, and after last season. So no, I think he was under a bit of a bit of pressure. Um, but they responded really well, and um, Dave Fafita was the man for me. I mean, Tino's always good. We always know know what you get from Tino, and Kieran did a really good job, Kieran, for and controlling things. But Dave Fafita was massive on mm. Saturday night, up against Somali Olegawatu, yeah. directly opposite him, with Origin around the corner. Um, I think he's you know, at his spot. Well, I think he's earned a, a right to be in the squad, Jimmy. I don't know if he starts, because I think they've got, yeah. they'll have full East Kafusi and Capewell, I think, on the edges, probably. And they've Bring been, him off the bench. They've been pretty good. But Dave's a bit of a weapon coming off the bench. Yeah. Not bad. He's, um, he, he could play that role of the, the game breaker. Yeah. So almost the reverse of what the Titans are trying to do with him, where the Titans want him to play longer minutes, have more impact, where... Billy Slater and Queensland might just say, look, mate, we only need you to go, just go crazy yeah. for 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah. Like at the right time, he could be that game breaker X factor that yeah. they've got off the bench. And, you know, if th- that could even be, you know, the, the debate about having a, a, a genuine 14 on the bench. They might go with four forwards and have David Fafita on as the well, game the breaker. Issue there is they've got Ben, ben Hunt, Hunt and, and Harry, Harry Grant. Grant. Yeah. Right? So, so, yeah. Look, and Palmer but, and Walsh. Yeah, but only one of them will make it. Really? Yeah, yeah you can't have them. You can't have both. Not in them. the seventeen. No, nah. no, because mm. one of Ben Hunt or Harry's got to be on the bench. Mm. Got to be. So you can only have one of those blokes. Speaking of which, just back to Caelan Ponga quickly. It's not on the rundown, but it, I did want to chat about it. Can you see, given what happened in Newcastle against Parramatta and Caelan defensively, you know they were, they were targeting him as if you wouldn't. Can you see at all Newcastle going? You know what? Let's put him in the fourteen for a couple of weeks and play him there, and just let the let the gunk go out of the game in the first twenty minutes. Well, he did that the week before, yeah. didn't he? Well, that was his, you know, comeback. So you, you see, but I mean, is it, you you got to find a way to get the best out of your best player, and it's unconventional because generally you think of rugby league as if you're the best player, you're playing eighty minutes and you're dominating the entire contest. Mm. But he's a bit they've different. Got the, they've got the buy yeah, this the week, buy, don't yeah, they? Yeah. So. Yeah, that gives him some a bit more time to, and he's he spoke after the game about how he wanted to go and work on his game and yeah and stuff like that. He and does he seems look tentative happy. though, doesn't he? He looks it's only natural. Yeah, yeah, it's only natural. And he's got a, but for me, he's he's Callum Ponga, right? If he's mm. fit, he's got to be yeah. starting. He's got to be in your team mm. and starting the game because um, he's the difference maker for him. Mm. He's a highest paid player by the length of a straight. Um, he's their captain. He's got to play. And I think as well, starting him off the bench just adds to that anxiety and insecurity about how you apply yourself when you're on the field. I I don't think, I think that actually, I know what you're trying to do is helping, but I think it hinders. Okay, fair enough. What about Josh Huster at Manly? About (laughs) speaking of players going away to work on things. um, What do we make of the noise? And then the latest is that he had a blue with a, a Blacktown workers player at training on Friday. And the latest, latest is Kirsty Fulton, who's had a lot to do with getting players to Manly, especially yep. um, the pl- players from the western suburbs of Sydney, which Josh is from, and just not being professional. And just Kirsty's come out on social media, just giving Josh a blast, saying, "Wake up to yourself, do the right thing." Um, these aren't from a Manly perspective. Um, <laughs> fan over here, uh, I'm not loving the noise, no. this particular noise, but how much truth is there to it all? Well, I mean, I was the one who spoke to Daly last week and Daly mm. was pretty um, raw and honest about um, what's confronting Josh at the moment. I mean, he's to go away and decide what he wants to do, whether he wants to be a footballer or a good, a, you know, live up to his talent or waste it because that's where he's at. I mean, he's, I, I know he's only young, but you can all the noises suggest out of that out of that club and around that club and around him that he's just not taking it seriously enough. Mm. He's not he's not committed to being the best player he can be. And that's fine when you're playing Jersey Flag or Harold Matthews, you can get away with it. But in the NRL, you can't get away with it. You'll get exposed. And he got exposed the week before, and that's why they've sent him away to go and work on himself. And if he doesn't, he won't be there. They'll let him go. Well, talent curse. He's, he's, he's got the talent curse. So he's, ne- he's never needed to rile. Look, 
use anything else in his life other than his talent. Yeah. Did you have the talent curse? <laughs> Absolutely not. And hey, look, I mean, he's on 800 grand a year, according to reports. Yep. yep. You know, and with that big money, it comes big responsibility. And mm. look, I'm not going to stand and sit here and say, did I get my life off the field right 100% of the time, all the time? Absolutely not. Mm. Nobody does. But when I came into training and when I came onto the field, I had a dig and I ripped in. But it just doesn't appear like Schuster's doing that. Jim, it's like, not, some of the sacrifices aren't that hard. It's not that hard to drive past Maccas or KFC and not stop in. It's not that hard to give up soft drink. I, I mean, reading on. this social media post, he lives a long way from where they train. Yeah. So he doesn't live in the area. And she's said maybe he should think about getting a nice little – and, look, real estate is expensive on the northern beaches. Yeah, but if you're can, on 800 a year, yeah, you, you can, can afford, afford the rent yeah. somewhere in DY, a yeah. nice little unit. Or you can put structure around your life so that you yeah. don't have to. Like, okay, well, you look at it from, like, a decision-making process. Why are you stopping there? Mm. Oh, because I'm hungry. Well, we put things in place to stop that happening. Mm. You employ – when you're on 800 grand a year, go and get help. Or the, I'm sure the club are putting the resources around them. And maybe perhaps, I've said this before, that the response not going to the World Cup was too extreme because it's not sustainable. Mm. In any anyone in life that you see the people like yo-yo or aren't consistent, mm. what it comes down to, it's you just need a disciplined approach, but a, but a realistic one. So if you say no, no, no to everything, well, it's got when it when it when it bounces back, or when you face that hardship, you go to what's always worked for you, and that's that's talent. And and you know, perhaps I, I've seen players before. It's like, well, it's always worked. I'm fine. Well, you know, you've got to adapt to change. You've got you've got to be adaptable. Like when you're on that big money for him, and he's, it, I think, like I, I say this from a former player point of view, that you wouldn't want to see a guy like Josh Schuster waste his talent, and and look back in. 15 years time and go, oh, I sh- probably should have. Could have, should have, would have. Could have, yeah. should have, you know, put into practice what people were saying because yeah. I was wrong there. And, you know, even that, the talk of the Tigers looking after him or, or going after him. Well, if, if let, let's say, like, look, forecast into the future. If he goes there, mm. he's probably going to get more money. But does he learn? No. Because what I'm always doing is working for me. And he could just be that player that bounces around from place to place to place where he's getting paid well, paid well. Oh, we'll, th- this coach will sort him out. And then he goes somewhere. Oh, this coach is a hot taskmaster. And, you know, whatever it may be. It just, it'd be a shame to see such a talent because he is hmm. go to Well, waste. yeah. I mean, you look at it, if he is on 800 a year, that's his minimum. I think, if that's, he lives cons- up to I think his- that's conservative. I think he's on more than 800. But well, anyway. if he lives up to his talent, yeah, that's his base minimum for the next ten years. Yeah, if he yeah. plays to his talent, well, he like you think year. about he, his lifestyle can be after that. I don't know who's advising him, but it's the old one, James and Reedy, that it's happened across every single sport, probably yeah. every single day. That eventually, who, how, no matter how talented you are, even Michael Jordan, he had at some point in his life to show a bit of resilience, and his came early. Luckily for Michael Jordan, he got dropped from his high school or didn't get into his high school basketball team. And that, you know, lit a fire that burned forever, yeah. basically. Well, well, this but is, I think this is what Manly are trying to do and a little bit of tough love. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of like, look, we we got, yeah, but we, we're not going to let you get away with this, like, substandard performance or substandard attitude or substandard weight category or whatever it, it may be. Because it could be the making of you. Because, well, you know, it might just be the shake-up that, that Josh needs. That That's what it could be. And in terms of the, you know, the fight at training, these things happen not mm. all the time, but they're frequent enough. Latrell and Jacob Post the other year, and, you know, that was plastered all over the, the socials and the media channels. Like, that's just, it's a fart in a tornado. Jimmy, do you think, do you think you've got to, uh, do you think you have to, do you think he's a 5'8 or edge back row? Because I'm sort of thinking now that they just need to scrap the 5'8 experiment. And just play him as an edge back row. It's basically one of the same, aren't they, these days, sometimes? Yeah, but sometimes there's the, the, the idea of playing a different mm. position changes. Well, he, was, he was so vocal about playing I know. Playing 5'8". That's what he wanted to do. But edge and, back rowers these days are just straight hard hole hitters, are they not? I, I, don't, I don't know if he'd be, he'd be a very different back row than what we're currently seeing. Mm. Like you look at the mm. barnstorming runs of David Fafita, you know, Hamoli. The, Hamoli. Like, yeah, c- contrast him with Olakawatu. Yeah. 
I, I don't he know. He was pretty good on edge when he was fit and Kieran was still there. Though. In the 13, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's, and that was, but that was when Tommy was flying. Yeah, that's true. Tommy literally made a lot flying. Of so good, didn't he? Mm. <laughs> Tommy not flying anymore at the moment. <laughs> no. Well, hopefully he is this weekend, but a huge game. Uh, Seabold oh, yeah. returns. Like storylines galore. Yeah. Does Tom front up? Do they pick Josh? Well, no, I, don't, Shost, I think they've sent Shost out for a few weeks, haven't Go they? Go away. So, okay. Seabold returns right. to the Bronx. Yeah. you I got all this. About it, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, yeah, did he, yeah. what did he say? Well, I mean, you know, played obviously. It played it down? Played it. Well, he's going to, isn't he? He said, there's It'd be no, great if he came. He no, just come out. I hope we go out there, beat them by 50, and they can all go and get stuff. He's still had a good, good relationship with a few people. I mean, obviously, Carl Morris, the chairman up there, um, when when Manly were considering hiring Anthony Seabold, Scott mm. Penn rang Carl Morris for a character reference, okay. and Carl gave him a good reference. So there's still people up there he's close to. I mean, you know, he takes immense pride in Pat Carrigan, what's happened to Pat Carrigan, how he's kicked on, because if you remember, Seabs gave him his debut and made him captain. So... Um, Seeds probably saw stuff in Paddy before anyone did. Um, Tommy Dearden, we gave Tommy Dearden his debut and he's now a Queensland player. So, you know, it wasn't all doom and gloom up there. They made the finals the first year and copped the bath. So it didn't end well, but um, I think he's looking forward to getting up there. And what well, the important thing now is winning on Friday night, right? It, it doesn't matter about... They're going to have to improve. Whether he's that going was coming up, on Saturday or night, or not, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, it was. I agree. It, it was coming in, and Brisbane, I think Brisbane's performance had been coming as well. Again, against South, they got the then, tickle up they needed. Yeah, so. yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how both teams respond. Uh, now it's time for this WTF. Now, oh, the, what the, the, oh. the WTF moment. Last few weeks, James, I think I've said what you were going to say. Now I'd be amazed if you're going to say what I'm going to say, but I'll let you go first so we don't double up. All right, okay. Okay, mine's well, a personal one. So if you if you oh. say what I'm going to say, <laughs> well then, <laughs> no, um. My WTF moment, I was going to go Josh Reynolds on the ref, mm. uh, which was a bit of a, oh, bit of a throwback. I love I like, the reaction from the ref. So do I. So did I. But I'm not. I'm going to go Braden Burns on one leg. Like, <laughs> how on earth did he manage to get through that game? Yeah. Like, what? He hopped through it. Like, <laughs> and he, did you see the chase back as well with, on one of the Fee Guy boys? <laughs> yeah. Like, he nearly, he nearly got there. <laughs> In- incredible like yeah. he was literally limp biscuit that whole game <laughs> it was like is he still out there that was my WTF moment this week fair enough ready you know what I'm going to go back to Manly on Saturday night yeah. and it's it's nothing to do with the game okay but you know what I, got, I was doing sideline yeah. in the rain yeah. couldn't find a chair oh. couldn't find a single chair in all the Brookfield <laughs> table they're all taken you, you have to floor. sit on the box that you carry the <laughs> the device in on the sideline who was next to you down no there chair? Who was your next to you down there? No, it's just me on my own. Am I lonesome? No, like no, no rival networks with fellow yeah, they riders. Chairs. Yeah, they yeah. got chairs. I got their Carry first in best dress though, really. You yeah. should maybe come a bit Couldn't earlier. Yep. Like you're, all, you're, always, you're always late for this show or oh. just on time. <laughs> oh, um, wow. Maybe if you got to the ground. Hang on. Who's you making said, calls, Jimmy? You just said no umbrella. No umbrella either, no. Forgot the umbrella. Whose fault no is that, chair. Brent? Well, that's mine, obviously. Correct. But you know what? I reckon it's character building. If you're on the sideline and you have yeah. no umbrella, just in the rain. Oh, Not mate. made of sugar. Mate, that's what they should do with Josh Schuster this weekend. Maybe just sit him on the sideline with yeah. no chair and... In the rain. In the rain. There's no, such, there's no such thing as bad weather. Only inappropriate clothing. <laughs> oh, yes. It's rain the one time in, in all year like it rains on the northern beaches. Who grew up in northern England. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, my WTF moment was I actually went to Melbourne on Saturday night um, for a side hustle and got back... And I haven't been to the airport in quite some time, parked my car there. You guys obviously travel a bit with Triple M. I don't know if you'd noticed that I couldn't, I was astonished. My head nearly hit the steering wheel when I put in the ticket and I got there on Saturday at about 10 a.m. And I checked out of the thing at about uh, 11 a.m. on the Sunday, 130 bucks. For one night. For one night. (laughs) In the car You park. must have parked in the red hot. No. Right yeah. outside. I yeah, did not. I reckon he's gone yeah. there. No, you I reckon Cup he's done a. the old... Um, valet. Col- the valet. Valet, yeah. yeah. Some of us, like like me, man, when every dollar counts. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm no. the park. I get the bus You're to the You're the blue airport. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, park I, and fly. I, I could park not believe fly. it. Yes, yeah. that's it. I could not believe it. Like, and then I checked the sign. Macquarie Bank, obviously, really struggling these days. Uh, if it's it's sixty three dollars or whatever it is for one night, sixty five dollars for you one night, go more than twenty four. And then hours. you go into the next twenty four hour period, and then it's just an automatic another sixty five mm. bucks. I hope it was so. a good side gig. 
lesson learnt. You should send him an invoice for parking. It's going on the invoice. (laughs) (laughs) It's going on the invoice for sure. But just a a community service announcement. If you're from Sydney, do not, if you're staying more than 24 hours, wherever you're going, do not leave your car in that P3 car park or P2 car park at Sydney Airport. P1. Anyway. P1. Be serious. Um, A a good news story, and we're all taken, obviously, and you talked a bit about it over the weekend, Nico Hines, about just what a what a human being he is and you know, Paul Green's kids and the boots and the, the Paul Green medal and the and the and the playing strip as well. But he, he surely has got a number six on his sky blue jersey for that first origin. Like you, you cannot possibly can see a way. And I just thought it from this perspective, you your Queenslander over there, that that would be exactly the thing that Billy Slater wants. Nico not playing? Nico not in the six. I could see why it doesn't happen because Jerome's done a pretty Combo. good job. And this is know, nothing against but, Jerome Luai, by yeah. the way. But I always, I've always said that loyalty, you only get loyalty if you win. You don't get loyalty when you lose the series. So, uh, And Jerome hasn't been playing terrible, but I just think Nico, Nico's been playing so good that you cannot overlook him the way he's playing at the moment. Now, he, Jerome might come out in the next two weeks and blow the door off the hinges, right? And yeah. suddenly he's, he's back in the conversation. But... Um, and obviously he's got the combination with Nathan, and which is pretty important as well. But I just think the way Nico's going at the moment, how do you say no? How do you say no? Unless you haven't, well, he, unless, he's a, you, he's, unless he's your 14. He's a dollar thirty to win, an, I don't know the markets, but he, he's surely about a dollar thirty to win another Dalian medal. Payne House is leading that at the moment, I saw this morning. Yeah, I reckon Nico, by the time he gets rolling, because he missed the first few. that would love um, that, Jimmy, wouldn't you, for front row on the Dalian, mate? It'd be he's, incredible if he yeah. did. He'd burst into I, tears. Think, <laughs> I think with... With Hines, the the question for for the New South Wales coaches and selectors is: Can he play with Nathan Cleary? Is he too similar? They both play number seven. Um, can they play together? Look, the the idea of the combination at club level, I think that's a it's a rare luxury. So it's something that Origin and um, other representative coaches would have to deal with anyway. You've got mm. a, a half, two halves from different clubs. That's mm. the norm, right? So it's not. Like, this is a luxury we're talking about. Like you say, Rudy, they didn't win last year's series. Penrith haven't been setting the world alight like this season. So that's the question. I, mean, I think if 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 they come to the conclusion that Cleary and Hines can play together, he's in. Yeah. You look at Queensland. I mean, Daly and Cameron, two of the, like, you know, jazz band players. You know, they just mm-hmm. go off on solos and, and, you know, play off the cuff a bit. Queensland seemed to make it work. Mm. I don't see how you can't make that work. And one thing I'm intrigued at, though, is that everyone's talking about, you know, if Tommy doesn't front up, oh, yeah, Campbell Graham, he deserves a go. I'm not saying he doesn't. Where do you fit Matt Burton into all of this? And does he fit into all of this? Is he playing a centre role with no, Latrell as the other centre? I don't think so. No, I don't, no? Th- I don't think, no. Because I think Latrell's got to be a left centre and then Campbell Graham's your right centre, unless, obviously, Tommy's fit. And it's a, it's a big if at the moment, but... I think Campbell's playing better than, and he's playing centre. He's yeah. playing better than Matt Burton, as good as Matt Burton's played since they've moved. In. He's been really, really, I think moving to sevens really helped him actually. I think he's taken. They've got the response they wanted to Matt Burton yeah. playing seven, Definitely. but or, you know I think he's he's well, is he is he pure, he's a purely a left sided centre, isn't he, Jimmy? He'd have to play on the left, wouldn't he? Which it's is where, where Latrell plays, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, it can't. It's Latrell or him. Seems strange. You just get your best players and fit him in somehow. Well, Steve Crichton's there as well. Yeah. yeah. Brushing him. Mm. It's it's an embarrassment of riches for New South Wales. A yeah. choice paradox. It's a problem. One help, one help though, Jimmy. But well, good. no, the, the choice paradox oh, is Christ. detrimental. I've got this for the next two months. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. And it's always been New South Wales' biggest issue is that, you know, the, the talk of who's going to play where. Mm. Like Queensland have kind of got it with the fullback situation at the moment. Mm. But, you know, I reckon Billy Slater knows his team. Yep. Mm. And he knows what he'll do if, you know, the seven, the six, or the one drops out due to injury or whatever it may be, mm. suspension. They just because they don't have you know, the embarrassment of riches that New South Wales do in those in those key positions and those superstar mm. outside back. So, mm. um, yeah, I can see a postman on the horizon. <laughs> Let's start with our great mate, Brandon Smith, because it's a bit of a scary moment for Brandon, mm. Jimmy's podcast partner. Yeah, Did you speak- do one today with you, Jimmy? Or? Uh, we, tomorrow, but tomorrow. he's actually, we, he was not scheduled to come back. So he's... he's oh, because they're going straight to Brisbane. Yeah, they're going straight to Brisbane. Okay. So we've we've got a, 
a very special co-host. Oh, oh that could be some mail as well. Speaking of side hustles, he's got a good one over there. <laughs> anyway, he was taken to hospital last night, Brandon, in a neck yeah. brace because he hurt himself. I was texting, we were actually exchanging texts last night. And Brandon wanted people to know he's okay. Um, it was all precautionary. He's undergoing some scans when he gets back to Australia today. Yep. Um, but, um, you know, he's optimistic that it's not too bad. It's nothing serious. Um, what was it, neck? Or? It was a neck issue, yeah. So he got taken off, uh, basically straight, taken straight to hospital in the brace. A lot of you footy players have issues with your discs, don't you, in your neck, and uh, that kind of sends some shivers down your arms and all well, that. Well, the worry so. for him is that his legs went numb. So that's, he said, basically it got a little awkward with his neck and then his legs went numb. So that is neural, there were sure. some concerns are obviously over that. But he said, look, the reason they took him off the scans because if there was something wrong and they didn't check for it, then... Would have been all sorts. Be so they're taking him away. He'll fly home. He's flying home today, obviously, or to Brisbane. He'll get some MRIs when he's there. But he's, he just wants people to know that he's 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 optimistic. It's not too bad. And he was back to his humorous self. I um, sent him a message <laughs> to see how he was going. He says, uh, "Yeah, mate, a lot of people are laying down these days." Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just you know, probably, probably just trying to milk a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, good news there. Yes. Now, yesterday, I'll tell you what, yesterday, we spoke about Jake Averillo earlier yeah. and how good he was. Jake Averillo actually has not got a contract for next year at the moment, which is unbelievable when you consider how, how good he's been for the Bulldogs this year. Um, you know, I think he's hopeful of staying at the club. And there's been some initial talks. There's been some initial interest from elsewhere as well. But I'm sure after yesterday and the way he played, uh, um, there's going to be a few more clubs banging on his door. Mm. Probably hasn't helped his cause getting a new deal at the Bulldogs as well. So, um, interesting one. With Jake Averillo. So fast. like He is lightning. The, the, how he stood up Tyro Sloan. Like, because Sloan is quick. Yeah. Like, he is quick as well. But Averillo, wow. Good and time he, to come up with a good performance. Well, yeah. it's a great, great <laughs> timing. And moving to centre, I mean, he's not, as we said earlier, he's not really a centre. I don't think he's ever, he's really been a centre. But he's he's done a really mm. good job there. Because the other centre, Paul Alam Alamotti, he's off contract as well. Both of them are. So, um, they've got some big decisions to make there, the dogs. I'm pretty sure they want to keep them both. They've got mm. the same agents, um, uh, Michael Hudson, Dave Riolo, same agents. So, um, you know, I think I think they're reasonably confident they'll get something done at Canterbury. But mm. there's some clubs banging on the door right now, and there'll be a few more after yesterday for Averillo. For sure. And finally, look, it's magic around this week, right? Yes. We're all going up to Brizzy. Or well, a few of us are. You going up, Jimmy? I am. You're going up? Didn't get an invite. <laughs> oh, Terrible. Charlie White, shout out. Thanks, Charlie, mate. No, all good. But, you know, the focus obviously will be on the footy, but I know what my old mate Pete Bedell up there in Queensland's going to be staring up. Grand final talk. Because ah. there's still no decision over the grand final. Oh, really? Still no decision over the grand final. So Where it's going to be played this year. The Landys and Mins haven't sat down but for a smoke. You can bet your bottom pipe, dollar yeah. this week the Queensland government will fire up again about the grand final. It's going to be on for young and old. Um, they got their own issues, the Queensland government, just quickly. They've, have you seen those figures around the, the new Brisbane Indoor Arena and the Gabba, the no. refurb? Blow, blow out? $2.7 billion for the Gabba and $2.5 billion. $2.7 billion for the Gabba. Well, they're knocking it down starting again. Pretty much. And then the Indoor Arena, $2.5 billion. It's been costed as per seat the most expensive venue built in the history of history. They mightn't be able to afford the grand final. $150,000 per seat. In that indoor wow. arena, what, what's that for? What's that what? for? The swimming at the Olympics, oh, and a, a multi-use event yeah, centre. But anyway, so the grand <sighs> final debate's going to heat up again this week. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. We'll fire up the governments. Get you know, going. I don't mind if they have the odd grand final up in Brisbane. You happy? Yeah, it's fine. Shout it around. Football Heartland. Take one to London. Vegas. <laughs> We're going to Vegas, Jimmy. That's locked Are in. We? There we go. You think it's locked in? Oh, I think it's close enough. Well, they're leaving yeah. next week. They're flying over there next week. They're not going over there to play blackjack. I think they're going over there to Matt, rock it all the way. How good would that be if, like, you know, Volandis gets off the plane and Abdo and they're, like, rougher than justice, just like... Well, they've got oh, magic how, how, You know, the, all the press are waiting for them. How was it? It was like, I've done my ass. <laughs> like, one of them's got, know, a, one the of them's game, got a tooth, yeah. tooth missing. The, one's like, got a tattoo. Like, face yeah, tattoo. Like, face tattoo. Yeah, the, the, we're going to have to rip, rip up that CBA because I've, <laughs> I've done the NRL's money. <laughs> How's Abdo's liver going to be after magic uh, round into uh, Vegas? Uh, Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. We'll see what happens. Ready? Uh, that's all for the, the yeah, Marbox. Good yeah. luck with um, Magic Round this weekend. I am yeah. slightly envious, but as a clean living guy, I'm not that envious. But uh, <laughs> is it a is it a good um, good drink? It's a lot of work. 
Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, there's no. Seriously, <laughs> yeah. there, there's there's plenty happening. I actually love Magic Round because it gives mm. you, as a fan, like we had it in England. Yeah. And as a mm. fan, what what you can do is, um, you actually go and when you're not watching your team, watching another team, watch a superstar. So watch Payne Haas individually. Yeah, Keep yeah. your eye on the game, but just watch him go about his business. Or watch one of the you know the superstar fullbacks. Go and watch James Tedesco and just keep your eyes on him. Look at the movement patterns and it's yeah it, it, that is a real eye eye opener and that gives you a real appreciation for what some of these superstar players do. Yeah. So that for me is what I really like about Magic. It's Man. good for networking too, Jimmy. It's the best thing for networking. Go, Captain, they? I went and watched the game last year from I haven't done it off from I sat at Suncorp and watched I think it was Canberra played someone and I watched it from behind the goalpost, mm. which you don't often do, right? Because we're normally mm. no, no. not in a press box where which is normally on the got to sit with line. the people, Reedy. You know, got with a, the punters and had a beer and got a. I love watching footy appreciate. from behind. Never. Never. Yeah, you yeah. See yeah, it's you see. Up high and yeah. Behind. Yeah, you sound like Desi Hasler. He liked to watch it from about fifty different angles. <laughs> and, uh, he had secret cameras put into NZ from halfway That's around the halfway mark and from different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's who you sound. The madness like. it is. Mm. Get it back, uh, gentlemen. Look forward to the stories next week on the Monday Scrum from Magic Round. Have a good one.